Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're looking at Base Plant's granular engine. When it comes to granular, there are a few things I touch in basically every case, and I want to cover those. So here I have a piano loop, and it is being played through, obviously, in snippets, and I am shifting through these areas and grabbing just different snippets to create some neat smearing effects. So granular does a few things really well. Um, one of those things is it can smear and make soundscapes out of pretty much anything that you put into it. And when it comes to adding in a loop, you get this cool way of sort of going through the loop and picking different sections and getting these sort of evolving textures that are hard to get other ways. In this case, it's sort of a short-lived soundscape, if you can even call it that in this case. Uh, but if we were to look at it by itself, this is what it sounds like. It's a piano loop. And if we get rid of the effects, that's what's there. So all the effects here are mostly just for gain. We have a compressor for gain. I, I ended up not using the limiter, a distortion, and a reverb, and a stereo. So I'm going to go ahead and clone this channel because I don't want to accidentally... Uh, mess with my original patch and let's dive into exactly what granular like means and how we're going to use it So I'm going to go ahead and just put down a note here on C5. So granular all that that means is That there uh, there are a bunch of pieces granular is just a whole bunch of pieces of something a whole bunch of grains And each grain here is represented by a dot if I play a note We have our dots we could go ahead and set this down to one dot and it's going to keep this one dot alive for a certain amount of time. It's going to play a piece of the sample through. And the amount of time it's alive is determined by the grain envelope. So each grain is going to have its own envelope. If we make this envelope longer, so we extend the decay out, you could also just drag up here. You see the sample lights up. And that's the original sample. Now in this particular patch, I'm modulating this position right over here this this is the position so let's go and let's line these up so just for the sake of clarity so i can move this around and pick different parts of the sample to play so every time i, I hit a key we have one grain go through and the grain lives a long time once the grain dies a new one is created to maintain this number of grains so hopefully you can see how that works if we have this very short the grains die more frequently and we hear them come up more often. As this gets shorter, the grains get generated more and more and more quickly and eventually it turns more into a tone than a piece of the sample. And we can slide this. Now right now we only have one grain. What if we had, you know, upwards of five grains going around? you can have the grains select different directions that they're grabbing things from. For example, some of them can be reversed. We can make them smear in a little bit smoother so that they, they just take a little longer to get loud. We could have them come in instantly. We get a much more clicky sound. Typically, you don't want this, so we're going to go ahead and smooth that out some. And so you can see some of the powers that we have here. And in this way, we can scroll through and pick different sections to play. So to do that, what we're going to do is, let's say that this hasn't been connected yet. Well, we could connect a macro to one of these things. So that now as we move the macro, we can change where it is. And this macro is something we can automate. And so that's what this top macro is. It selects where we are in the sample. So now that we know what this does, and now that we know that this is automatable, we can use that to create things that are consistent in the track. So like this will always play at the same spot and will always sound the same way. There are a couple other selection options that I didn't take advantage of here. For example, all the grains right now select a position after, the, after this position, after the playhead spot. You could ch have it choose things before and after it. So it occurs on both sides if you have a longer grain size. And you get that kind of stuff going on with loops this generally doesn't work so great because these are different notes and if they're all hitting different notes at different times or if there's a chord change in your sample uh, it's just gonna sound really chaotic and if that's what you're going for great with really small grain sizes or grain envelopes I should say 
Um, yeah, so some, some, just so you know, in the world of granular, you often hear the term grain size, which is kind of like how long the thing is alive for. In this case, the grain envelope, if it's very small, and they tend to stay a little bit closer so you don't run into that issue as much. But if you drag in a single note, you can go a lot crazier with that because it's all the same notes all going to be on the same page. No crazy multi-note things going on anywhere in the sample. So let's go into exactly how this effect here ticks now that we know the basic idea. So I went through, I tried a bunch of different loops. You're, you're just going to have to experiment. And I found that I really liked this piano loop that you've been listening to, especially when you play it very low. So I'm playing C4 and the occasional octave up on a C5, and I select different areas using a position automation. So that's what is causing this movement. Yeah, so I already like this. I'm like, this is cool. Things are moving around and you can see, you get these subtle variations that if you were to try and do this with synthesis, you'd have to automate some other things and it would just be a different creative process where here you literally just try out a different part of the sample and you can get wildly different things. So on some of these fills, I have the notes change, right? It plays a higher note and I have it select a much different portion of the sample and it moves through there. Yeah. So you get these really, really nice effects that come in. And the other thing I like to mess with, something I'm not actually doing, I didn't play the intro for you here because it's still under construction, but I have the grain envelope actually start out quite a bit longer. And then as it plays, it tightens down into this sort of much more compelling thing. You can see it moving here. There are two things happening here. So first, the green envelope's moving. Now, this value doesn't actually show it moving. You can see the envelope moving. It's the grain envelope. So if you want to automate something, you need to connect it up to a macro. Actually, you could probably get to things directly, but I always connect up to a macro and just automate the macro because you can name the macro. And then when you automate it, it actually will like keep the name. If you named it before you automate it, it'll be whatever number macro it is. So like the number two, macro number two, grain envelope. So if you automate it um, before you name it, it's obviously going to have just like macro two or whatever it is. But if you do this, you get this really nice uh, change of name that makes it easy to understand where things are. So anyways, yeah, you don't see it moving, but it's been connected to a macro. That's why. So I simply just clicked and I just attached it to the release here. The last thing that's going on with that transition is there's a reverb that is turning off over time. So the mix starts out high and it goes low because I want to really pull it in and, and change vibe into something. And I haven't quite worked out what, I, what else I want to do with the intro, uh, but that is the granular bit. Like, you know, there it is. You put your sample down, away you go. There are some other options in here that are pretty interesting. One of them is align phases. So what align phases does is it guarantees that when a grain is created, that they move in phase with the other grains. And this creates much more stable starting points. If you have this off, it sounds like this. And with it on. Granted, in this case, it doesn't make all that big of a difference. In some cases, it's quite significant, especially if you have very quick attacks. Uh, this, this can make a dramatic difference. Warm starts another one that doesn't make a tremendous difference for what I'm going to be doing here. Um, but it basically has grains running before the sound starts. And, you know, we'll just turn this on so you can hear it. And with it off. But in cases with longer grains, this can cause grains to already be part of the way through the sample in positions they wouldn't be normally. So this could be kind of a cool thing. And along the bottom, we have the option to sort of randomize things. So we can have the grains have different levels. We can change the pitch between the grains. This can add a chorusy type of effect to it. You can change your timings. You can change where they are position wise. You can just sort of randomize these things. In this case, I gave a little bit of panning randomization, but I wound up using a stereo module after 
So this didn't have like a tremendous effect on it. There's also an option to do things with chords. That's really cool. But I find that like 99% of the time I might mess with one of these macros, usually the level time, actually all of these, it's a, it's a toss up. They're, they're all pretty useful. Um, I'll mess with one of these often and I will automate position in the grain envelope. They just offer so much control over what you're doing. After that, I was like, you know, this sounds like it needs a, a dope baseline. If you're listening over a phone, this is probably like inaudible. Then for that, you know, you gotta have some, some cool drums and some strings in the background. And from here, now I could say, you know, well, let's try out some different fills. Maybe at the beginning, I want the fills to be more interesting. I could have all the fills start out different. I could have it come down low, and maybe hang out there. Find a note. Maybe we have it do a movement. And this is where you're gonna wanna know the key or sample and you can determine how long you want to play things for, and you begin to sort of sculpt your thing. Here I went for the classic, do something, you know, and then at the very, at the cadence point, do something slightly different. So here we've got our two measures, and right before we go to the next two measures, I have a high note come in, and it's got a type of fill, and uh, here these repeat, and then the third time, it does something different, the, right? The law of three is a pretty common thing in music. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. If you've made a cool granular patch or you've been super impressed by a granular patch, uh, link them down below. I'm always checking out patches. Recently, I saw someone who made a, a voice in face plant. Totally blew my mind how good it sounded. Uh, so if you've got a cool patch, I'm, I'm always looking. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.